Hi everybody, all my followers, welcome to another video. So this video today is on a 2008 Volkswagen Caddy. And this car came to me with two problems, which I'm going to show you. So one of the problems is... I think am I going to have to start the engine for that? No, I don't. So as you've seen, the airbag light uh, went off at the end of the checkup and then obviously just came on again indicating a fault uh, initially I was asked to look only at the airbag uh, apparently when the car was dropped here I was told the engine light also came on um, after he spoke with me about the airbag so uh, he asked me to have a look at the engine light as well but that will do that on a separate video if it worth to make a video for it. So this video is going to be, as per the title, is going to be on the airbag light. And the first thing we're going to do is connect the Maxis and see what the ECU tells us. So we just did a quick scan and we're going to go into airbags. Let's going to see what's in there. I haven't looked yet, so it's going to be... So we have something here for the airbag, but is a passive code, which means it might be just something that happened. Let me see if there's any live data we can look at. Airbag driver side too high because it's not installed airbag yeah exactly it's not installed so correct 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 not installed passage aside there's no airbags in there nothing installed in there okay so is only it, it looks everything looks okay Although we have in there uh, airbag driver side too high, so let's see if there's anything. Okay, so that's what we should have in there, one of those. So we have saying too high. Uh, we still have saying in there on the trouble code says passive sporadic. So the first thing I'm going to do, we know the code already, so we don't need to worry about so live data unfortunately it doesn't tell us a lot other than that it's not like you can actually see some sort of live reading that's all you get that's it so we're gonna have to yeah that's all you have so the first thing I'm gonna do Okay, just got interrupted. Uh, anyway, we're going to delete the codes and I want to see exactly what comes back or if it comes back straight away. Let's going to have a look. So no fault detected. Let's going to... It's going to read. So it passed this time. It's going to... Ignition off. Ignition back on. Oops. Ignition back on. Have a look at the light. Light goes off and comes back straight away. It's going to go into the airbag again. And we should have that fault back on here. Yeah? Okay, so now we have an active and static code. Driver, airbag, <coughs> excuse me, uh, igniter, and I5 um, upper limit exceeded. So now we can have a look at, at this. So the first thing I'm going to do, obviously, is going to be taking the steering wheel out, possibly take this airbag off and have a look behind. Um, the chance side is going to be the clock spring, uh, usually. Driver side airbag issues is around the 
the square clock spring, whatever you want to call it. So that's where we're going to have a look first. And before I forgot, because I get criticized sometimes to... So step by step how to get to this. So to remove this, so first thing you take these off, this cover. This cover you just pull it up, it just clipped in there. So just pull it up and it will come out. Uh, pull it up at the front first, like this, and then it comes out. Then the bottom one, you have a screw somewhere in here. Where is it? Here. There's a screw in here. And then you have two screws right here behind the steering wheel, which we're going to have to rotate the steering wheel until it gives us freedom to put a tool to take these two, one on each side, and then the bottom one should come out. Okay, to remove the airbag, I don't know how I'm going to show you this, but because it's really awkward, can you see on that mirror, can you see that spring over that clear um, kind of a tab so you just pull so as you look on the mirror just pull that spring down and and clip that from that little tab and the airbag will just come forward so you pull that spring and pull the airbag at the same time um, and the airbag will just pop out so there's two of them one on each side you just turn the steering wheel take one then turn it again and take the other one oops okay and the airbag is out uh, Visually everything looks fine. I mean unless we have some corrosion or some bad contacts inside this plug I haven't had a look yet uh, Wire wise everything looks good. Everything looks plugged in So nothing wrong there the plug looks quite clean to me uh, So what we're gonna do first is there's another plug here down here for the airbags Which I believe is gonna be this yellow one usually is That comes off. No, no, it's not No, it is it might be. Usually it's the yellow ones. So we're going to have a look and try to trace it down. Yes, it's the yellow one. 100% sure. So this is the yellow one for the airbag. You have a Lear module down here. We hope there's nothing wrong with this module. Uh, usually the airbag is a straight connection. So we're going to measure the clock spring from here, hopefully, to here. Okay, so we're gonna use the multimeter. We're gonna use, let me think, these two probes here perhaps. And obviously, I need two of those. Better get the right colors. Okay. It's really cold today. Let's kind of plug all these in and then look at the measurements. Okay, so I want to show you what I'm doing here. So I took this uh, bottom cover off just to see, but as you can see, uh, this is a one stage airbag. So the other two wires are not connected, which would be these two lanes. I don't know if you can see on the camera, there's two lanes here on this side of the PCB. And surely you'll have another two on the other side for the second stage or first stage and second stage because there's only one stage these two lanes here, they are not connected as you can see. Um, and then you have, I'm gonna mean it, where's the other probe? So I'm connected on one of the wires right at the back. As you know, if I unplug this, that's gonna short the, the airbag circuit for a static current purpose. I'll, I'll explain that on some of my videos in the past. So, but uh, connected, that should uh, open the circuit and we have obviously a straight connection to here from the back of the wire oh, you can't see the thing now can you let me see if i can put these on the camera so you can look at the readings somehow it's not going to be easy maybe like that yeah i think it does okay so there's a straight connection to this pin here okay 0 0.2 ohms this is from one of the wires and I'm gonna follow it up and it's gonna be this pin here so 0 0.2 from here it seems to go straight up 
into the actually clock spring so one of the pins right there it should have uh, we should have the same resistance as we do or very close to what we just read in there so we are reading 0 0.3 ohms so one of these pins up here in the steering And we have 3420 on one and we have open line on the other one so one is open line we know that's an open line so it's not that the wire this wire we have 3420 k ohms yeah kilo ohms so this is the wire and as we can see we have an open circuit on this one let's gonna check the other one just uh, curiosity there's a little bit of a pain in the ass to connect the probe at the back here because you don't really have the room. So we're gonna take this off, move the probe into the other wire, and now put it back on. Oops, oh gosh, sorry. Sorry about that. It's gonna put the thing here again so you can read the screen. So let's gonna check the other circuit, which is gonna be down in there. We should have zero homes here, or 0 0.3, sorry. We should have the same on here. Come on. Correct, and now let's gonna look. Oops, let's gonna look up here. What we have. We actually have an open line completely on that one. Okay, so that's it. So it's actually the other way around. Wow. So this actually is good. 0 0.8 ohms on this circuit. For some reason I'm getting a really high reading when uh, I might be something on the PCB. It might be something on the other side that is actually giving me that reading but definitely I have 0 0.8 ohms on this pin or 1.2 depends how good the connection is but around 0 0.9 so that's gonna be the circuit so this bottom pin let me show you so in there I'm not gonna be able to see it uh, no you're not but Okay, so you have a row of pins on this side and a row of pins on this side. Uh, you can't really see it. So the middle two pins here are the pins for the airbag. So the bottom pin is the pin we have connected now, which is giving us the reading of 0 0.9 or 1 ohm. So that's the circuit. I don't even need to go back there. No, it's, it's not going well today. Damn it. Okay, I don't even need to back probe in there anymore. I just need to back to probe these in here. So this circuit here is my circuit for this pin. Actually, I was doing this different earlier because I have one of these female connectors, connectors like this, and it goes straight into the pin. So I'm gonna plug this in on this bottom pin or the middle pin, sorry. You might be able to see a little bit better now with that connected. So that pin is is well is the middle pin but the bottom pin on, on the plug. So and we have we're gonna have on there No I don't we're gonna have on there 0 0.7 ohms now I'm gonna switch it over to the next pin, which is the other pin for the airbag. And we have open line completely. So, just as I was saying at the beginning, the problem is gonna be on this clock spring. And we're gonna take the steering off. No rocket science, just take that out in there. And that's it. Okay, so to take this steering, uh, you need one of these uh, star sockets don't know I think it's called start something I don't know um, now a quick tip for this um, what I usually do to remove them is 
I just take the key out and you lock the steering and that obviously helps you to secure the steering but do not rely on the lock alone because if you force it some steering wheels they can be quite tight and if you force too much the lock you can damage it and you don't want to do that you don't want to damage the lock so be careful I always support it with my knees so I'm gonna lose the steering wheel so I'm gonna force the steering wheel that way so what I do is I pull it away from the lock this way then I hold it with my knees and I start to take it off try to put less pressure as possible on the lock although the lock can help you okay before you take the steering wheel out this is a multi-point like most of them are but some of them they have a kind of uh, flat area so the steering wheel only goes in in that area this one it doesn't so it comes out on any position so you can see that mark right at the top and all I've done was before I take the steering I've done a little notch in there to mark the steering position so I know I'm gonna put the steering exactly in the same position okay okay so before uh, I go actually into the clock spring um, I wanna take this um, little module out uh, try to see try to look on the other side make sure there's nothing on obviously it's gonna be you have two lanes here and you're gonna have the other two lanes on the opposite side so make sure there's a good connection on them, there's nothing corroded or something like that. So I believe to take this module, there's this screw here that needs to come out. The plugs at the back, and I believe this just drops down. Just gonna have a look, see if it's how it comes off, but I think it is. Okay, I think I was talking nonsense on this last bit, but because um, we checked the the circuit for this lane, so as I said, we're still lanes on the down on the opposite side. Oh sorry. Yeah, and for these two pins, which is the ones, these two last pins, which is the ones for our airbag circuit, you have the two lanes on the opposite side, and just as I said, is a straight connection. Airbags usually they they don't go through any circuits here; they go straight into the into the airbag issue. So it looks okay to me. It looks okay to me. There's nothing that catch my attention whatsoever. So it's gonna be definitely it's going to be the clock spring. So let's gonna take it out. Uh to take the clock spring. Oh it just comes out now. It just clipped right there at the top and it just comes out. Okay, so clock spring is removed, it's here. But I'm not gonna hope any here obviously we're gonna go to the workshop and we're gonna dismantle it and see if we can get it fixed um, I really hope so otherwise it's gonna have to be another clock spring to open the clock spring um, you have three well this is gonna be difficult to show you inside there but there is three little tabs that you need to push which is these three here so there's one here one there and one there that's just uh, a guide uh, but is that you need to put a screwdriver from this side from the underside and then put one from this side to push this out so this goes on this side we took this bit off and let me figure out what comes out next I think it's gonna be this white plastic part that's gonna Come out, there's a few tabs here to take out that one. A few one on this side. Let's see. The studs come out, yeah. Oh dear. This guy's not gonna be easy to take these ones. Oh. Whew. Right on this side, but oh, start to come out. I think, yeah, we put something from this side in here to push this away from the tab. That's two. Oh, I'm bending my 
Tweezers. Ah, oh, no. It'll be that side. It will come out. There we go. That bit comes off. What do we have next? A lot of parts. Okay, so here we have the ribbon cable. Ah, uh, it's one of those. Okay, I hate these systems. It's one of those systems with cogs inside that pulls. Rather than just be a, um, uh, a complete... Uh, rather than the ribbon cable just being here in a spiral, it actually goes round a few sprockets and go back and forwards. Um, so I'm going to take this one here now, which is just pull it from this side. And I bent my tweezers. Damn it. Just gonna pull them on the inside and there. They should come out. There we go. And now we need to be careful because as we take more and more parts off, we don't wanna. Uh, if I take this off, I'm never gonna put it back right. There's so many turns that's unbelievable. How the hell that comes out? Ugh. I'm gonna take these off. I think I'm just gonna take it out and then figure out a way to put it back in. Let me try. Take it here. Perhaps. And try to leave. Yep. So like this. Okay. So I don't know if you can see. All this. It goes around that one in there. And then comes back. Actually just goes around once. Okay. Okay. Oh, I can see the damage straight away. I can see the damage already. So let me just. Oh dear. So it goes run and goes run on the first turn. Okay. Not complicated, I think. Uh, can I take this off down here? I so will be able to sit, yep. Yeah. Like this. Okay, the damage is visible straight away in here. Can you see it? Oh, can you see in there? Let me show you in there. The lens are broken completely. And the problem is, there's three broken. Although one was still reading okay. Oh, huh? Yeah, so now this is. Let me have a look. Let me measure to see because we have four and then we have the thingy. Am I gonna cut this? And that's it. But I don't think I have enough ribbon. It's a quite short ribbon, isn't it? Let me do a few measurements first and then we'll go from there. Okay, so where are we? Okay, so as I said uh, while in the car, you can't really see because it's all black, but 
The two middle pins are the pins for the for our airbag. These two extra pins right on the edge. Well, you can't really see them anyway. There's four pins here in the middle. The ones in the edge, the two in the edge would be the second stage airbag, whatever. These two in the middle are the ones for our circuit. So one pin, which is this last one, uh, is our good circuit. You're not going to be able to read. I can't show you everything on this camera, but but I'm going to try to do my best. So this middle pin is this good pin here. You're going to see 0 0.6 ohms, which is good, which is this circuit here that you see in the lens. So we have four lens here. I don't know how good they are coming on the camera, I hope. Oh, they come quite quite good. So the first three lanes. So the lane that is good is this last one that you can see is intact. These are the lanes right after is the one that we have an open line. And we could try to use these ones, but they are all three are broken. So I can't even use the spare lanes for the second uh, stage airbag to actually do the job for us. Because they are all gone. Okay, but I'm gonna solder this. I'm not gonna. I don't know if you can see. You see these white. Why I keep going? So you see this copper on the edge. This here in the middle, it just worn through the the actually copper lanes. There's nothing here. It's all gone. This one is just broken still, but these ones are. Comp There's nothing here. The, the the actually copper is gone. So you you worn all the way through the copper, and now this white bit is this side of the plastic so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrape this I'm gonna put uh, I'm gonna solder this lane back on that's all I'm gonna do okay let's gonna do that then okay so we got the lane repaired um, hopefully you can see there how I've done it I've just soldered a little bit of lane that I took from an old clock spring and we saw it in there. It's about three millimeters long, maybe. So we lost a little bit of flexibility in this area, but I don't. Th I'm not concerned about. It should be just fine. But nevertheless, we're going to protect this area here, so it doesn't happen again. And I will show you in a minute how we're going to do it. But before that, obviously, we're going to measure this again. It's going to measure the two lanes now. Make sure we have. Uh, So that's gonna go this one first, which was the one that was still good. Make sure we didn't short nothing there as well. 0 0.8, and the next one says open line, which is just fine. It's gonna move into the next one. We should have on the next one, we should have 0 point whatever 0 0.7. And there we go. Spot on. So let's uh, just uh, find a way to protect the lane in that area so it doesn't break and it's not going to cause us any issues uh, it's not going to get trapped or anything or stuck as the steering wheel rotates and it's not going to put any stress, any stress on here so let's gonna find a way out to do it um, I said I'll show you how but I don't know yet how I'm gonna do it let me think about something okay some of you might not agree but I've used aluminum tape there's I think two or three layers of it so that's gonna protect all these from wear and tear obviously this is a little bit upper now or it'll be raised because obviously they're soldered in there so it's gonna wear a little bit quicker uh, but I think this will last long enough yeah it will last long enough no problem uh, even if he wears through up to the solder, the solder is quite thick, so it's not going to cause any issue. But th this should last for quite a long time. It should last for a long time. So let's kind of put the clock spring back together. Okay, so it's closed, all centered. Uh, I think I refer to this already in past videos, but what I do is, you just turn one way until you feel the resistance that is on the limit. Turn it the other way, uh, feel how much you have. How many turns, complete turns you do until you feel the resistance on the opposite way and then just turn it halfway. So in this case we have eight turns from left to right. 
then I just go one of the ends, four, four turns, and stop in the middle, and that's going to be your center. So that way you know you have enough turns one way or the other way. So all closed. Let's going to put it back together. Back together. Let's going to put it back on the car, and we should have this problem fixed. Okay, everything is put back, and obviously put it back is just the reverse. No rocket science in there. It's going to turn the ignition on. Oops. So we need to clear those codes now. Hold on a second. Nope. Just gonna go back into the airbags. Two codes. Just gonna clear. Okay, I'm gonna read it again. It's gonna switch cycle the ignition. And sorted, job done. So it didn't come back on as you've seen. It's gonna go back into the module. No faults detected. That's it. Job done. Uh, what else to say? Uh, that's it for this video. The, that's it for this video. Um, as I was saying, um, right, that's it for this video. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I hope there's some information here that you're going to find it useful. We got the problem solved. Um, if you have any questions, comments please put them below and like always thank you for watching